Today is the day. The day you've been dreading since you first heard your mommy dad uttering the words from their lips. They fluttered across the air, wiggled their way down into your ear, and nestled themselves deep into your brain folds. Wake up! Time to leave! We sold the house! <laughs> Nothing's quite like that melancholy, bittersweet feeling of standing in an empty room that's been home to you for years of your life, looking to the crop circles in the carpet, where a piece of furniture used to be, or an All the linen marks appear on walls where major moments hung before. Soaking in that emptiness, Searching for the comfort and familiarity, and finding it's all been wrapped up in boxes, and that this isn't your home anymore. Your memories, like where you cracked your head on the corner because you got super dizzy from spinning around on your cityscape carpet, and then you stumbled around and smacked right into the corner, you got a concussion, you had to go to the hospital, and it left a dent in the corner of the wall. Well, that's all gonna have to live exclusively inside your dumb, stupid, brain-damaged head now. And then that moment, like the end of every sitcom, where you stand in the doorway, and you look back at where you've been, but you know you never will be again. You say, I'm really gonna miss this old place. Guess now I'm gonna have to be the fresh prince of somewhere else before turning the light off and closing the door for the last time. Roll credits. Down from the heavens bearing the gift, it's Jometheus. And moving can be a hell of an experience. Depending on how far you move, how old you are when it happens, you know, a lot of things can change. And the further you go, the more different things can be. The first time you move to a new house can feel kind of disorienting. Not only do you have to cope with the fact that you just lost the only place you've ever known, but now you've got to get used to all the things that are different about the new place you call home. That almost rhymed. <laughs> this shower's all weird. It's too small. This room smells like cigarettes. This is too big. There's no pee stain in the carpet for when I accidentally sleepwalked and peed on the floor. That's somebody else's pee stain. It can be uncomfortable, strange, even a bit scary when you first have to sleep in an environment entirely new to you, knowing that this is how it's going to be from now on. First night you're there, you'll probably lie awake in bed. Restless and uncomfortable thinking thoughts like, My bed's facing the wrong way. My polarity is all thrown off. Oh god, I'm gonna fall off the earth now. I know it never got robbed at my old house. But what if this house is super susceptible to being robbed? Or a ghost? Or demons? Did I leave my liver in my old room? I don't think I did, but how would I even know? Next day you wake up and you're feeling terrible because on top of everything you were feeling yesterday, now you're super tired. You look around and realize this hasn't all been some terrible dream. You really be living like this though. But you go to school and you talk with your friends and that's all familiar. And after a few mistakes, walking back to your old address on accident, Shit. You start to memorize coming home to this house, and that becomes a new normal. Maybe your parents let you paint your walls, or hang up posters, or pick out some new bed sheets. You start making new memories, like when you were super tired from not sleeping your first night, you tripped into the wall, and left a dent in it. You realize, maybe this place isn't so bad. Maybe I could call this place home. Oh, mom and dad got divorced again. Here you are in an entirely new part of town. Time to leave. We don't love each other anymore. <laughs> You're just on the outskirts of the Sea Bear Circle where your old school district will allow you to still keep going there. So now you're getting all Adam Lyon and going to another school because Lyon's your last name. You'd like to hang out with your friends, but guess what? They're a bit too far away. You're only going to see them on special occasions now. Now you got to learn on an all new campus, all new classes, all new teachers and make all new friends, and if you moved in the middle of the semester, maybe their curriculum is different, and it's gonna cause something screwy with your credits, because the closest thing that they have to Banjo 101 is History of My Fat Hairy Nuts. Damn yeah, it, how am I supposed to get my bluegrass scholarship with this? And how are you supposed to get through fifth period trigonometry when your buddy Greggy is back at your old school passing notes to your empty desk over and over? Who's gonna back you up when Bunt Sturmlin is trying to take your lunch money? Better yet, Who's gonna try and take your lunch money when Bunch Sturmlin is back at your old school grasping for a wedgie that he will never reach? Everything's different, everything sucks, I hate you, you're not even my real school. Guess what, eventually, you adapt. You make new friends, maybe you're in fourth period and the kid next to you turns and whispers, I don't know why we need to learn this. It's not like I'm ever gonna use fat nuts in my everyday life. And you turn to them relieved like, thank God somebody else said it. 
and suddenly Chyler is your new best buddy. Maybe taking this class or meeting this teacher or meeting this friend is going to change your destiny and maybe, I don't know, maybe you even realize maybe your future does involve some fat hairy nuts. Okay, this hypothetical is getting a little weird, but you get the point I'm making. You just bear those grills and you improvise, you adapt, you overcome. Home is where the heart is, but maybe the hardest friends we made along. done with high school now. Fuck all that shit. You're legally an adult, even though you can't smoke or drink or rent a car, and your parents say, time to leave, get your shit together. Next thing you know, you're on a plane from, I don't know, for example, Phoenix, Arizona to Queens, New York, just for an example, I don't know off the top of my head. Suddenly, everything's different. All your family, all your friends, all the places you grew up with, they're back there now and you're here. The floor is different, the fauna is different, the food is different, it's disorienting. Why are the buildings so close together? Why is everybody parked on the street? Why is everything so expensive? Where are the stars? Where are the EGs? What the fuck is a bodega? It sucks. You know at first, but you get used to it. Eventually, along with the issues, you can start seeing the benefits to living in a new place like this. They don't have EGs here, but I mean, I've never had Thai curry before. Look at all the fucking food options here. Oh damn, I gotta run out because I forgot to buy milk. Let me just run two blocks over because everything's not two miles apart and they stay open later. I could do that now. Wait a minute, you guys have actual seasons here? And you realize it's not that this other place is wrong. It's just different than what you're used to. And yeah, it doesn't make the problems you have with it go away, but you can learn to live with them. And eventually, the unfamiliar becomes your new normal. You adjust to it. You can even get to the point that when you return back to your hometown and visit, it feels different. It's familiar, but in a kind of sad, nostalgic way, where you think, wow, I used to live here. I lived like this for 20 years of my life. Now, in my 26 years of life, I've moved a total of 12 times. The two hardest were my very first at 15 years old um, because my parents had just gotten divorced. I had to switch school districts. The whole situation was just a mess. And the first time you move is always going to be the hardest, let alone everything else that changes. You're leaving the place that you've lived in your entire life. And then the second hardest was my 11th at right around 21, when I moved from Tucson, Arizona, all the way to the Bronx in New York, which was the first time I had moved somewhere that wasn't in Arizona. And also like the second time that I moved somewhere that wasn't in Tucson specifically. It's a big state and Tucson's a pretty big city. I've experienced all three of these levels at some point, And if you haven't already, you'll most likely experience at least one of them at some point in your life pretty rare that somebody will stay in their entire life in one house. It's just a part of life. The circumstances of any individual move can vary, and they can also change how you feel about them drastically. Some moves are out of necessity, while others are completely your own decision. Some are heartbreaking, seeming to destroy everything, and uprooting this life that you've known, or that you've built for yourself. Others are exciting, relieving, where you're finally moving on from a hard time in your life opening the door for new opportunities, or finding a place that you can call your own. I've personally moved so many times that it doesn't really phase me that much anymore. I get used to a new home within a day or two. I, I even wrote a little song about it if you want to check it out I'll put a link. I'll always have that little tinge though, that feeling of, I guess this is it. It's not such a full house anymore. I guess it's true what they say. Family matters. I guess this is it, friends. Cheers, dinosaurs. <laughs> With every move, it gets a little bit easier. Because I have the experience to know that it'll be okay. Life goes on. And if you haven't moved and you're worried about it, I've got some other good news for you. Back before cell phones and the internet, once you moved, that was it. There was a big chance that you would rarely ever hear or, or see from your family and friends ever again. You could send letters, you could, could visit maybe a couple times a year, but you know, that costs money. Long distance calling fees were a thing, remember that shit? But we live in a time where it's increasingly easy to stay connected. Not just with phone calls, but texting, instant messaging, video calls, social media, even in video games. I could play Mario Kart with my friend across the country in real time and call him an asshole over Discord or Skype or Facebook Messenger. And with how insanely detailed digital graphics have gotten, and with VR technology rapidly improving, 
we're probably not too far off from being able to see each other face to face even on the other side of the planet. And they're even working on tech that'll let you give your mom a big ol' hug so she can feel it even though you're 2,000 miles away. That's not a joke, I'm not making that up. So even though you probably have to leave the house you're living in for a different one at some point, just remember, it's not the end of the world. And it can end up being a good thing in the long run. And as always, until next time, remember to stay safe, stay cute, and I love you. Bye! Holy shit out there.